so how might design thinking uh, help us navigate this uncertain future? So I've got three uh, ways or three tools I want to contribute uh, to the conversation. Uh, one is journey mapping your pain points. So looking at problems is bigger than just a single um, you know, conceptual problem, but it has many parts to it. Um, to develop lots of ideas, to not just stop with the first idea that we have uh, for solution we come up with and, and to get experimental, acknowledging that a lot of the time we don't know which one is the best idea uh, until we try them. So let's dig in a little bit. Um, first of all, after a disruption happens, uh, we have you know, a problem and we're trying to solve this problem. You know, maybe people can't come into work, maybe we can't service our clients like we used to. Um, and, and so we see it as a big kind of conceptual problem, like we just can't do this. Uh, the problem with that is that this is usually multifaceted, right? This being the problem is usually you know, uh, made up of all kinds of different parts. And so we really wanna look at it in terms of whether it's a journey map, which is what I'm gonna look at now, um, or just some multi-connected problem set. Uh, we wanna understand that it's more nuanced than just a big kind of problem idea. The journey map is really nice because it helps us think through it in stages chronologically. And it says that people don't just arrive, for instance, to the office or to the restaurant. There's a whole process that happened before that they uh, had to hear about us they had to search us out they had to make a reservation or they had to schedule something they had to go on and navigate that process and figure it out and then they had to drive there and then they arrive and then someone greets them and on and on and on and this happens on websites when you first arrive to a website and figure out how to navigate and check out it happens in a you know a checkout process at a, at a technology store like a best buy when you're trying to uh, go in and buy a piece of technology. How do you decide what you're going to get? Who's interacting with you? So problems are usually composed of different interactions with people and technology and, and steps and moments in the process. So one of the first steps is design thinking teaches us that, you know, to have empathy across an entire uh, process journey, to look at the problem from the point of view, usually of, of the, the, you know, the customer, or it could be of one of your staff members, where you want to see what are all those moments that are occurring uh, within that journey um, that is, you know, whether it, again it's a checkout experience or it's a purchase experience or it's a going to work experience or a going home experience. It, what are all those different moments? Because each of those moments have an impact on each other. And so we first want to kind of chart them out. And so the journey map kind of looks like this, you know, kind of path where there's different moments on it. And an example might be a path where there's a search moment and then I log in and then I'm looking for a product that I want and then I'm deciding between multiple products and then I'm checking out, right? All of those things are happening in this. And, you know, the problem might be uh, in all of these different moments that they're all, you know, creating stress or they're, they're difficult, um, but they're probably not all equal. And so the first thing in this is to choose you know, which one do we really want to focus on? An example here, let's give an example of Netflix. And I, I like the Netflix story because it's disruption of Blockbuster and other, you know, physical movie stores is really an interesting case study in general, particularly when it comes to uh, disruption and, and thinking creatively about the future. And so, you know, first of all, one of the big disruptions in, in the traditional movie industry uh, was the fact that fast-speed internet, like it did for a lot of things, enabled people to you know, download movies for the first time or be able to just access movies without having to go anywhere. Um, so when you looked at the traditional method of running a movie and, and uh, you know, staying home and watching something, first you had to drive to the store, that took up time. You had to look around randomly. Maybe the aisles had some categories, but they're confusing. That took time. They decided on a couple of movies, but there's risk. Or, Am I going to like it? Is it a good movie? I don't know. So let me buy three of them just to make sure if I don't like the first one, I can watch the next one. Then I go home and I watch it. You know, um, I can only watch it on one device because usually I have to hook up a VCR or a DVD player and it's only connected to one TV and I can't just take it with me if I need to go somewhere. And then eventually I need to return the movie, which is more time. And I'm probably going to forget about it. So I'm going to end up paying some late fees. So Netflix came into this knowing this is just not a great process and there's a lot of places that we could disrupt, right? So where, where do you even start? I think one of the, the guidance is here is to say, 
look for the most acute pain. Where do your clients or your team feel you know, the biggest amount of, of pain in the process? Because you don't want to try to do everything all at once. Um, maybe choose one or two where you can start to, uh, to, to, to test and prototype and some of the things we're going to talk about next. But the main point here is that we want to look for the biggest pain points and to, to really separate a problem into these separate pain points so we can really see it as a process and a journey that someone goes through um, you know, when we're designing for it, designing for a solution. So point number one, problems don't live in isolation. Um, journey map those pain points so you can see it spread out, you can see the individual moments and start to think about how they impact each other. All right, so let's jump into number two. Number two is, you know, so going back to our journey map and looking at some of those pain points, we've chosen one of them. We've chosen one of the ones that we felt was the most acute pain uh, for our clients and that we want to solve. And so what do we do next? And one of the things that, uh, that, that design thinking teaches is that you know, and exposes that we usually kind of stop too early when we're coming up with solutions. We have that idea in mind or our boss or our manager, um, you know, thinks, all right, you know, I understand the problem. Here's the solution. Problem with that is there's often a lot of different solutions out there, right? There's almost no problem where I would bet a lot of many that there's no problems that have only one solution. Uh, but most of the time, there's 50, 100 different solutions. The problem is, in our heads, we're starting to judge those solutions too early, so we don't even say them out loud. Uh, one of the things we teach in design thinking is just get them out there. There's a, there's divide the stage up from ideation, where I'm coming up with lots of stuff, and the stage where I'm judging things. Because I can, I, if, if I'm combining those at the same time, I end up crushing a lot of the ideas that maybe need to get out onto the paper, get out of my head. Um, or that will spark other ideas for other people, especially if you're doing this kind of thing in a group. But number one is there are lots of ideas. And so you want to go for volume, um, come up with many different ideas. And you can do that on your own. Um, you can also invite a few other people into the room and say, all right, for 15 minutes, give yourself a time frame. We're going to come up with as many ideas as possible uh, to, to, uh, to, to fix this pain point or this problem that we've identified. And again, you put some rules up there. One of them is don't judge them yet. Right, 15 minutes of just throw them all out there. Um, and then when you're done with that 15 minutes, you can start to look at, you know, what are the ones that are most important? What are the ones that we're going to throw out? Um, which are the ones that we have the most energy behind where we feel it's a team, we'd really like to tackle it and this is a great solution and let's go with it. Or what's the wildest one or what's the most practical one or the one that is the lowest hanging fruit so it's not going to cost, you know, take too many resources to implement. However you decide to choose, you know, now it's kind of the fun. You choose uh, which idea you want to start with. And this doesn't mean you have to throw the other ones out and you never get a chance because we're coming to part three here in a minute, um, which I'm going to show you what you do with all these different ideas. But number one is to come up with lots of them, prioritize the ones that you want to start with, um, and then we'll go from there. So there's always more than one solution. There's always more than one solution. So develop lots of ideas um, before you stop too early. And, and the other reason for that is uh, for sure your competitors are out there are going to be thinking about these ideas. And so one way to de-risk um, your future decisions is to try to come up with all the ideas that, uh, that are possible and then decide which ones you want to move forward with. All right. So we talked about uh, journey mapping all our pain points, coming up with lots of ideas once we've identified a pain point. Now we're going to get into the third uh, tip that we get from design thinking. And that is, once I've identified a pain point that I really wanna go after, I come up with a, a solution that I feel a lot of energy behind, um, it's time to get experimental. And so we need to create an experimental process where we can say, all right, I don't know if this idea is gonna work or not, um, but the way we're gonna find out is by testing it uh, with real clients, real people in real situations so that we can get feedback that lets us know whether it's gonna work or not. Um, this is the process to find a good idea. This oftentimes they're not obvious. And sometimes the ideas that we think are the no brainers that are great ideas end up flopping and they're no great. Um, and it, sometimes you spend way too much time uh, developing them just to figure out eight months later that it wasn't a good idea. Uh, and sometimes the ideas you thought were crazy or bad end up turning out to be the ones that really work. And so early on, we want to you know, identify this here, uh, you know, what are some of the key solution features of that solution you're coming up with? What are some of the key features that we can test early to know if it's going to have traction or not? How do we develop a quick prototype? You know, one that's 
just got enough fidelity or resolution that allows us to test, but isn't um, going to spend a lot of time and effort and money uh, to develop. And how do we find those core users that we can, you know, a group of them, some early adopters, um, where can we go ahead and find them and, and test our solution, get it into their hands so that we can see how they react to it, things they misunderstand, things they like and delight in. Um, that'll give us uh, kind of the feedback that we need to decide, can we iterate this idea and refine it into a good idea that's going to work? Or, you know, if we get to the end of the process and realize, hey, maybe this in the end just isn't a good idea, we can go back to the different idea that we had a lot of energy behind and try that same process, right? So that's why you don't throw out all those ideas. You kind of keep them on the back burner just in case that first one doesn't pan out, doesn't work out. Um, and you repeat this process and you try to get that time frame down where you're able to repeat it quickly so you can really uncover what those great ideas are. I like this quote, again, coming back to Netflix, Mark Randolph, one of the co-founders, um, he gave a great interview with Tim Ferriss and said, it wasn't about having good ideas. It was about building this process, this culture for testing lots of bad ideas so they could eventually figure out which ones uh, you know, would emerge as the good ideas. And so here's you know, you know, original CEO of you know, an $8 billion company and growing and said, we didn't know which ones were gonna work early on. We've got really good at developing a process for testing and experimenting so that we could figure out which ones for sure wouldn't work and, and the ones that would work would emerge and we would let those ones live and, and they became some of the best features that Netflix had and allowed it to disrupt in a whole industry. Um, so yeah, the point number three, uh, you often don't know what's gonna work, which idea is gonna be the good one. So time to get experimental, develop that process, develop your ability as an organization to try out ideas and let the merit of those ideas as, as dictated by your actual customers or users tell you which ones work and which ones don't. So to recap, uh, design thinking is gonna contribute uh, three different uh, tips for us in this new future world. Uh, problems don't live in isolation. Um, they're usually more complex and interconnected. So try to journey map uh, your pain points so you can kind of see how they're connected uh, and, and choose which one you wanna work on. Um, there's always more than one solution. So develop lots of ideas uh, before you stop too early. Um, and you have to know which one's going to work. So get experimental and, uh, again, allow your customers and feedback to tell you which ones are going to work for the future.